Hello and welcome back to the devlog for the Command Donuts, a game which I've been developing for a while now using Unity. Today we're going to be looking at scene loading, switching and spawning, so let's just get straight into it. The first thing I decided to do this week is completely redesign the factory level. Because it was far too small and the rooms were very narrow, this new version is a lot bigger and I've tried to make the layout resemble a realistic factory with the entrance lobby, a hallway showcasing the product and then the open factory floor, complete with loading bays, storage areas and machinery. The walls in the middle of the floor represent the areas that the props will take up, I just haven't drawn these yet. Near the end of the level is a stairwell which will take the player to the upper floor for the next level. With this new level, it's going to need more props and textures. I started up by drawing some basic floor textures for the various rooms, brick texture for the exterior walls, and some new props like a pallet. All pretty standard items for a factory. But the one thing the area will need is a forklift to shift all the products. So let's get designing that. So it's back to the trusty sketchbook to draw this one up, and after a few attempts, I've got something completely passable for now. Again, it's most likely to be replaced at some point when I get my art style settled, but for now it would do. And once these were drawn up, it was just a case of getting them into the scenes, making it look a little bit nicer. At the minute, everything is contained in a single scene, which works fine, but means that all the managers, the player, and any other persistent data has to be copied into every single scene I create. The thing about scenes in Unity is that they're simply a collection of objects and multiple scenes can be loaded at once. So what I can do is add all the player and the manager objects to one scene, which is persistently loaded, and then the environment and enemies are all contained in their own scene. So to set this up, I create a new empty scene, copied all the objects over that I wanted, and using this setup, I can unload the environment and load a new one, all without changing or respawning the important bits. When the player enters and exits zones, all of the enemies are going to be deleted and respawned, with nothing being persistent. This way of handling it will work well for gameplay reasons, as it allows you to farm enemies for specific drops. Say a boss dropped a weapon you wanted, just leave and come back again and it will respawn. And another massive benefit to this approach, and a reason I've gone for it really, is that it's just a lot easier. I don't have to worry about saving data or anything like that, just chuck it all in the bin and start fresh. Okay, and here we are in the scene, and what I'm going to do is just give us a bit of a tidy up, finish up the uh, rest of the painting, rest of the tiling, because we've got a fair few things to fill out in this level. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get the brick on the wall tile map, and just simply paint all across this, because this is going to be the outside of the building, so it doesn't make sense to have the walls the same as the inside. It's just a little brick. It looks all right, um, and I will have some grass here. I just haven't got that going yet. Um, but another thing to tidy up. So this is all looking pretty good, all this here. I've got this nice um, sort of alternating tile pattern going on in the entrance lobby. It's plain white wall. I don't really like these textures because it's sort of got like this weird circle. I think I much prefer this kind of texture with the noise. Um, this is a carpet I made where I just drew a plain blue square, drew lines all across it and then added noise so it sort of blends it a bit nicer. I think that looks quite good. If you turn the, turn the uh, gizmos off, you can see that carpet. It actually looks like a carpet from sort of this distance. So that's really nice looking. In here, what I've done is drawn up plain concrete using the same method where I've just gone in and uh, drawn a square, added some noise, a bit of uh, sort of balancing the effects until I uh, sort of got it right. And then I just need to add this to the tile palette here, pop it in the tile palette folder I've got. And now I can draw this one along the floor. Uh, you can just sort of do this box fill. So what I'm gonna do is just box fill that all along here. All along here, all along there, this little bit, this little bit, this area, and that there. So there is a, it's a nice sort of floor. Um, this bit will be a carpet in here, because this is going to be the stairwell to the next room. As you can see, I've got this little, uh, little gizmo here saying end level trigger. And then we're going to go to... What were the toilets down here at the bottom? They were the plain floor. So we're going to do the same thing for these toilets. Box it, plain floor. And how did I transfer them? It goes all the way to the door. Like so, like so, and like so. So that is looking pretty nice for now. 
Um, is that missing a texture? That's that's got no texture, right? So that can be. Uh, mm, yeah, I'm using this floor. I might as well you. I might as well use this floor for all of it. So there we go. So it's broken up. Obviously, I know this doesn't look finished. There's no sort of uh, transitions between tiles because here you can see there's just a straight flat line. Doesn't look very realistic. There's no um, there's no framing. There's no border, which would be something that I will work on in the future. But that is the level looking nice. So the next thing we're going to go ahead and do is sort out some of these lights because some of these lights and the spawns and everything are, are placed where the old level was. So it's sort of a bit, as you can see, the lights don't work nicely. There's no sort of natural glow to them. They're cutting through walls. It, it, it just isn't sort of, it just isn't quite correct. Um, but that is, again, something I will look at and I will hopefully be able to solve in a later, later episode. But for now, they're fine. It's just so you can see, really. And let's get planning. So here's this forklift I drew up. I did have a few attempts at this. It doesn't look good, necessarily, but it doesn't look bad. Um, if I grab the player, if I just zoom out and grab the player, where is he? So basically what it's going to look like is this. Um, just imagine that the forklift is like so, where the player is sitting sort of vaguely inside of oh, I've grabbed the sprite the player is sitting sort of vaguely inside and they will just hover like so um, and the forklifts maybe will be drivable maybe but for now they are static props just like the crates so the next thing to do is the player spawn is in the correct place so, uh, vaguely I'll put it just about there so this is this is spawn one. This is where the player will spawn. There will also be another spawn. I'm gonna give it a rename to spawn two, and that one is going to be in the stairwell itself, because obviously this is the exit of the level, but it's also the entrance to the level if you're coming from upstairs. So we need that one there. Spawner region, right? Let's get the spawner region. This spawner region is this whole area here. And I can just go in one by one. There'll be maybe an enemy's in the toilets. An enemy is here. You actually can't fit in the... I just realized you can't fit in these toilets. Now the toilets are actually usable. Naturally, you can fit through the door because it doesn't really make sense if you can't. And that is a is a pretty good level, to be honest. So let's see how it plays. Okay, so you come through the front door. There's a guy in the toilets minding his own business. He's been dropped. Bit of stutter there, but I think that was just more the... Uh, I don't seem to be getting any rare ones. There's a rare one. I mean, obviously, there is a, a, a few glaring issues. First thing is the enemies do absolutely nothing. Um, the inventory, yeah, the inventory is working nicely. Uh, there seems to be a gap in the floor there. But have the enemies in the next room spawned? They have. Uh, if I can fit through the door. Kill that guy kill that guy kill them I actually can't get in there because I built these in the oh wait can I uh, no okay yeah yeah these these are in the wall okay I was right um, you kill them and then you know you would fight your way through the level maybe there's a sort of a, a big guy in this sort of area here or something that you have to kill before you could get through the door and then if I walk through here um oh okay <laughs> it spawned a test level i was using as a little ex external thing um yeah didn't need to do that but 
it did spawn a new scene. So there we go, you've completed the level. Well done. And that's going to do it for today. The new level is looking great, the scene loading is working, and up next it's time to get the gameplay polished with working enemy AI, more items, and a nice looking camera to give the player some visual feedback. But for now, thank you for watching, leave a like and subscribe if you're enjoying the devlog, leave a comment down below for any suggestions for the game, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.